What's going on guys? Welcome back to LOI Fan TV. I hope you all had a fantastic Christmas and a happy new year to all of you as well. And um, what better way to kick off the year than with a transfer show? Been a couple of weeks since we've done one. I took a little bit of time off over Christmas and the new year just to just to relax, take it easy, and we will be back with uh, regular content heading into the new campaign now. So if you have any suggestions for any videos you want to see, let me know down in the comments below. I'll be happy to oblige. But if you are new around here, make sure to subscribe. And if you want to enjoy the video, as always, please do drop a like. It is much, much appreciated. If we can hit the 50 like mark, it's always a bit of a, a target for us with these. Uh, that is fantastic and it shows that you want us to keep them coming as well. So yeah, make sure to like and subscribe. But yes, jump straight into it. Plenty of news doing the rounds in the LOI. Um, a lot of rumours, lots of done deals since we've last caught up. We'll start off uh, at back order as per usual with Bohemians. Now, they have, uh, last time out, I think it was just Dale Rooney they brought in. They have since, they haven't been very busy yet, which is definitely a concern. Um, they have brought in Rob Cornwall and they have brought in Sten Reincourt. Apologies if I'm butchering that. An Estonian striker, Rob Cornwall, we know all about him, bringing him back. But Sten Reincourt is uh, is a signing they brought in from Estonia, a striker that didn't need one. Obviously, they've lost Dean Williams to Shales. They've lost Jonathan Afalabi, which is a massive, massive blow, but decent money for him. They brought in Steen Rencourt. Uh, he looks like a big, kind of imposing striker will suit Divine style of play, I think. So uh, it's, it's always a bit of a risk uh, bringing in players that have never played in the league before. Not, there's not much known about them, not a whole lot out there. I think he had a loan spell at the end, uh, at second half of last season, and he scored three goals in nine games, I think. So it's hard, hard to know um, what he's going to be like when he comes in, but we will see um, and a, on a multi-year contract. So it's kind of a, a tricky one with that one for well. It's like they've brought in players, they seem to bring these players on multi-year deals, and if it doesn't work out, you're kind of stuck them down for the next year. You have to kind of keep going with them. So it, it is a big risk, but we will see how that transpires. If he kicks off and is great, then obviously having them tied down for another year is fantastic. So we'll see how that one plays out. But definitely a lot of work to do for Bohemians. Very, very light in a lot of areas. And a lot a lot more business yet to be done. I think they have a few on trial. There's plenty of rumours in the rounds. Um, and of course, James Talbot has come out this week. Bohemians came out with a statement to say that he's taking some time away from football to concentrate on his mental health. And yeah, of course, it goes there saying that we wish him the absolute best. Um in that uh, it's it's um so brave and courageous for him to have come out and been so honest and open about the situation so yeah wishing him the absolute best a couple of goalkeepers that Bohemians are rumoured to be looking at are bringing Ed McGinty back from Oxford which would be a fantastic one I've been saying for years that Shamrock Rovers should have gotten, gotten him from Sligo and I said recently that they should go get him from Oxford now Shamrock Rovers really that's the level I rate him at so if both can get their hands on him be a fantastic piece of business Dean Linus as well he's been linked uh, obviously he was the same Pats keeper last year had a great year with them uh, won the FUI Cup so that, that'd be another solid piece of business so two good transfer targets there for the goalkeeper area but we'll see how that plays out and they have a lot of work to do all over the pitch so it's just it's just with bows they've left it late again they did it kind of did it last year as well especially defensively and they've done it they're kind of doing it again and that concerns me they're kind of throwing things together and it's this very unideal preparation for the league campaign which isn't too far away now all a lot of the other big sides have have got their business done nice and early so it's, it sets them on a back foot kind of going into the season already so they um it's a big big job for for decky i don't know if it's his fault if it's pat fennan's fault if it's Dan Lambert, whoever it is, I don't know what it is, but I don't know why it's taken so long to get the business done. Try and get it all done before Christmas nearly and then get add a few little bits and pieces in January. That's kind of the ideal. So yeah, yeah, it's it's far from far from ideal for Bohemians heading into the new campaign but we'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks we'll get some big names on board Derry City have confirmed the signing of Dundalk's top goal scorer of all time Pat Hoban a massive massive move in the League of Ireland and it will really really give them a huge boost in the final third next season as they hunt down a, a title and um, they're hunting down Shamrock Rovers of course so bringing in Pat Hoban is a kind of a proven goal scorer he'll get you probably 10-15 goals guaranteed pretty much if he plays week in week out with the chances that Derry will create for him as well obviously Dundalk um, lose them is a, it's a massive blow for them um, it's it's not sure what's really going on behind the scenes there it's a little bit it's one for, for hopefully might come out in the next couple of weeks what, what's, what's really transpired there but uh, for Pat Hoban for Derry it's a fantastic move fantastic signing and we'll definitely he'll be, he'll be, he's going to be the man to spearhead their attack next season and I, I do envisage him having a good season and it definitely closes the gap that little bit more with uh, Shamrock Rovers I think Drogheda United have really really impressed me with their business so far they've kind of gone about it nice and quietly but they've got some really really good pickups in they've got obviously Andrew Quinn from Shells Connor 
Denmark came from shells uh, to to good defender defensive options. So we've got Franz Peru from Atalanta Town who had a fantastic season in the first edition last year. Was he the top goal scorer? I think he no, he's I think he was second or third in the in the charts, but had a fantastic year with them. He looks a really really exciting prospect. And I think he was actually linked with your bows, with your shells as well. So for Drogheda to get him, it's a real coup. So um yeah, it's a it's a really really exciting signing for them. They've got a couple of other players in you know, Evan Weir actually left the club on loan. To, uh, sorry, left the club to go to Walsall, but he's come back on loan for the first half of the season. So um a couple of other players come into the club. So yeah, Drogheda have been impressed by their business and I'm looking forward to seeing how they how they shape up for next season now. Yeah, I mentioned Dundalk there briefly, but they've been very, very quiet so far. They've brought in Dara Keane from UCD, and they've brought in a former PSV youth midfielder, Cohen Ostenbrick, who was most recently playing with FC Eindhoven. He's a 23-year-old midfielder, and he's been capped at under-17 level with the Netherlands. Um, so that's that's an interesting one to be, be interested to see how he gets on and how he... He um plays for for Dundalk in that midfield area. It's it's a it's a big signing. Could could be it could be a shrewd shrewd piece of business. Uh, but obviously you never really know how these lads turn out. You you have to kind of see throughout the season. But uh, an ex- exciting signing if it wasn't for all the other kind of stuff that's going on. And it just looks like a bit of a mess at Dundalk at the moment. They look kind of unprepared for this campaign. And obviously people predict them to kind of finish nearly in the bottom three or four kind of thing and, and it wouldn't overly shock you with the way they're lining up to but I do expect them to get busy they need to they're kind of similar situation to both they need to really really start getting some business done um, Nathan Shepard apparently has been has been linked back with a move I don't think it's going to happen though Um, which is a huge blow be a great signing he's, been, he's a fantastic goalkeeper for them so uh, it's, a, it's really really up in the air for Dundalk and a lot of business needs to get done as soon as possible especially with the loss of Pat Hoban of Dan Kelly and just to name a few so yeah um, a lot of work to do at Dundalk First Division Champions Galway have made a couple of decent signings they've brought in Gary Buckley from Sligo they've brought in Leo, Leo Gaxa from Kerry who is a highly rated youngster I believe uh, they've brought in Patrick Hickey from Athlone Town and Carlos L- Sullivan who's a, who's a, who's a solid, solid winger from Sligo Rovers so a couple of, couple of decent pickups there um, as they look to kind of consolidate in the Premier Division next season they've obviously re-kept hold of a lot of that squad from last year which was the priority for them so no major household names in particular for Galway but that's not really the way they operate they have a hard working industrious side under under um, John Caulfield and Ollie Horgan that will work hard and fight tooth and nail and Galway will be a very very difficult place to go this season and I do envisage them probably staying up this season so yeah picking up a few players like that will, will help them along the way and I could see them maybe making one or two more uh, signings before before the windows out. Shamrock Rovers have brought in Dara Burns on loan from MK Dons, a really really big piece of business for them. Obviously, a, a, a very talented, exciting winger, and um, hasn't really worked out from an MK Dons since making the move from Pats, which is a huge shame. Hasn't really got enough game time. A similar situation with Dawson Devoy, who's gone elsewhere in the football pyramid now. I can't remember where he's gone, Swindon or something. I think, but uh, Dara Burns has made the move back to Ireland and he's moved to the Champions, and it's obviously gives him a lot of uh, versatility and different options in that front three. I think he offers a lot. Obviously ideally playing on that right hand side cutting in on his dangerous left foot and um, obviously I say Pats fans would be just a little bit disappointed that he hasn't come back to them whether they were in from or not I'm not too sure but I, I assume they probably were um, as he as he obviously provides so much quality and he will be a, a good pickup for Sean Rovers they brought back Marcus Poom on loan which is massive as well he was very very good for them last season and the fans are happy to get him back on board again for the 2024 campaign there has been rumours of a return of Johnny Tenney as well I've heard so uh, if they bring him back into the squad it gives him another little dynamic in that front three as well I, I do think obviously he had a decent season last year but I do expect him to even kick on further if he was to go back to the same environment the same dressing room he knows it now uh, I do think he's such a talented young player and so much, so much to offer and he's only going to get better so I think if he did move back I think he would improve uh, a lot this season he'd really show us what he's made of so uh, kind of nail down that spot in the team and stuff so yeah, I do I do think it would be a decent move to bring Johnny Kenny back to the Tallis Stadium as well in terms of shells then obviously uh, something that I was really impressed by with them was the rate at which they got their business done it was, most of it was uh, pre-Christmas I believe and a lot of these players are kind of experienced and a lot of kind of European experience as well which is which is going to be crucial for them um, in, in their European endeavours this season getting through a few rounds uh, this is going to be massive obviously I think I discussed in the last transfer video about Keith Ward, Sean Gannon I believe Dean Williams maybe as well and Lorcan Healy coming in as a keeper option as well since then they've brought in John Martin from Dundalk he was wanted around the league as well a lot of a lot of sides were interested in his services and he has joined Damien Duff's side John O'Sullivan from Bohemians which is definitely Definitely an interesting one, a bit of a controversial one. Obviously, making the move from Bowes to Shells is never a popular decision, but Bowes were happy, happy to see the back of him. To be fair, he hasn't hadn't 
done well there at all and there's some horror stories about him not horror stories but there's people people saying stuff about him and all this kind of thing so he's coming to shells with a real real point to prove and that's going to work in Duff's favour you feel and they kind of like thrive off that kind of hated kind of environment from around the league they, they, the squad comes so together such a tight knit group and it kind of it's like what the Mourinho team was like back in the day nearly that's his tight knit squad nobody really likes them or whatever but it really uh, helps helps the squad deliver and play better and um, bring brings the squad together so yeah he's he could he has a lot to prove so we'll see uh, whether he's a starter whether he's an option off the bench it gives us more depth in a number of areas though which is which is something as well but the big signing for Shells which I think is a shrewd shrewd amazing capture obviously the Dar Burns signing for Rovers allowed this to happen it was Liam Burt making the move to Shells most unloyal man in football I think he's now for Celtic Rangers uh, Shamrock Rovers Bohemians and Shells now so it's quite, kind of a funny stat but yeah Liam Burt is I think we all know what he's, he's, he's what his game is about he was, he was really really good for Bowes and kind of petered out towards the end of that and that shit, Shamrock Rovers last season didn't really work out that move as well as it would have expected but he did show obviously glimpses of his ability he's so quick he's so direct and I think Damien Duff is the perfect manager to get the best out of him I think it's going to be a really really good pickup for Shells gives him that option obviously to play on the counter attack that bit of pace in behind uh, is can be massive especially on European nights and stuff as well he will give them such a different dynamic I think it's going to be a really really good signing One of the, it's kind of going on the radar but this, that could be one of the signings of the season I think I think he could really really propel Shells into good areas and, and then having the likes of Sean Boyd and Matty Smith coming back into the squad after big injuries last season that's like two new signings so uh, Shells' is, um, forward options looking a lot healthier especially given Harry Wood and Will Jarvis obviously their loans expired and they played massive parts in getting that fourth spot for Shells last season so they did need to replace them and they have uh, done so adequately adequately it seems so uh, we'll see how that plays out but yeah a couple of big signings from Shells and they, they seem and the, the big thing as I said before getting it done early so so important the whole pre-season together the squad really comes together and it gives them the perfect platform to kick start the season really strongly so yeah I'm impressed by Shells business to be fair Sligo Rovers made a couple of signings as well Um, they brought in Simon Power from Shamrock Rovers they brought in Ellis Chapman from Chatham Town on loan and they brought in Connor Malley from Dundalk a couple of couple of nice pickups there I'm really really excited to see Simon Power obviously he didn't really work out from Shamrock Rovers but I've heard really really good things he's an explosive winger really really quick and obviously need that kind of fresh start a new a new club a new environment to really propel his career so yeah I've heard he's a, he's a really really talented young player so I'm excited to see him get an opportunity at Sligo Rovers. Um, Connor Malley obviously was at Dundalk last season, so it's a, it's a fresh start for him as well. Ellis Chapman uh, seems like he's a midfielder, obviously online from Cheltenham. Haven't heard, no, don't know too much about him, but I believe he's been described as a box to box midfielder with a good passing range, according to John Russell. So it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. It could be it could be a true pickup for Sligo Rovers. Obviously, they've had a good few departures as well. Obviously, I mentioned Carlos Sullivan to go away already. Greg Bulger, a lot of experience leaving the club as well. Got to Cork. Uh, Daniel Lafferty's left the club as well. So, and um, Gary Boylan as well. Gary Buckley. So, yeah, a lot of experience leaving the dressing room there. So, how will Sligo adapt and, and, and get kind of overcome that will be remains to be seen it could be a bit of a challenge um, especially just in the dressing room and having that experience could, could losing all that in the one transfer window could be could be big for them so uh, I'm not sure what to expect from Sligo this season but um, I don't think it's going to be hugely improved on last year to be honest St. Pat's will uh, consider themselves firmly in the title race this season off the back of obviously last season's uh, FAI Cup win and the business they've done so far obviously I think you mentioned previously the two Calvinists coming in Brandon and Keane respectively uh, they've brought in Rory Keating from Cork City which is a big big move I'd say he was wanted by probably half half the league nearly if uh, like probably the top half clubs were kind of fighting out for a signature and he did make the move to St. Pat's he scored that was a 14 league goals for Cork relegated Cork last season which is an impressive return and so yeah he's, he's, a, he's a good signing Aaron Bolger coming in from Cork City as well he was linked with Shells and a couple of others as well so he adds a lot to that midfield dynamic Connor Keeley is a really really impressive piece of business a massive massive blow for Drogheda to lose him I'm, I'm sure he was offered a new deal uh, I think he had been offered a contract in, in England as well I believe by, by somebody so uh, first pass to get hold of him it's a fantastic piece of business uh, him alongside Joe Redmond at centre half will be a really really strong pairing and, and a quite a formidable formidable one to be fair and it could be the backbone of a really really serious title challenge for St. Pat's next season and I'd be surprised if they're not and it'd be disappointing if they're not in, the, in, in a title race that goes down to the wire or, or they, like it, it, they, the pressure is now on I think St. Pat's have to have to be right in there next season 100% and finally Marcelo Petaluja I believe the goalkeeper that St. Pat's have loaned in from Liverpool obviously they 
negative uh, previous experience with that and positive experience with that. They bought in Yaros there a couple of years ago, um, the goalkeeper from Liverpool on loan, and he had a great spell. So they'll be hoping for for similar from that as well. But especially with Dean Lyons leaving the club, he he'll come in now to uh to, to grab that number one jersey and compete with I think Danny Rogers is is there as well. So um yeah, good little pickup for for St Pat's there, and it looks like their squad is pretty much complete now. Couple of uh departures from Pat's though. Ben McCormick, obviously a really really talented young player. Would have expected him to be breaking to the team this season or last season or this season. A uh, really really talented youngster gone to Waterford, which is a great pickup for them. I think it's probably the right move for hit for Ben as well to make sure he's getting that first team football week in week out. And it could be. One that Pat's come to regret and um, letting him leave and because he is he's a really talented player uh, Adam Murphy as well who had a kind of a breakthrough season last year a really really talented exciting young player has made the move to Bristol City as well and um, so wish him the best of luck over there um, and he, lo- he looks a really talented prospect so I'm not surprised that a championship club has secured his services Keith Long's Waterford have been busy enough and they've, they've strengthened their squad with a lot of Premier Division experience in the, lo- in the form of Robbie McCourt and Darryl Lee two players that Keith Long would know from his time at Bow I think so um, yeah two players that Keith Long knows well they have experience in the league and I think they'll definitely contribute a lot to their survival bid this season um, Ben McCormack as I mentioned there has come into the club I think that's a really really good pick up uh, Aruby they've picked it up from Shells who didn't feature a whole lot last season looked decent at times but didn't feature a whole lot for Shells so he'll, he'll get another he'll get much more game time at Waterford this year to show us what he's all about but an exciting prospect um, and Kasper Radzikowski who obviously was with Bohemians last season centre half and um, he's been picked up by Waterford as well so Keith Long obviously was keeping an eye on his performances last season they've brought in Joseph Ford from Perth Glory don't know a whole lot about him but we'll see what he can do obviously in terms of departures for Waterford Roland Idowu has gone to Shrewsbury Town um, which is a blow Thomas Alou has gone to Wexford uh, Liam Kerwick to Cove Ramblers Shane Griffin has moved to Bray Wanderers and the big one of course their top goal scorer from last season and it is a devastating blow he has moved to their sister club in League 1 Ronan Coughlin um, has left the club it is a massive massive blow to Waterford um, and it's just put so much pressure on the other strikers in that area to kind of really really step up and chip in next season um, Ronan obviously had a fantastic year last year and, and Fleetwood obviously keeping a close eye um, on all of Waterford's players really so it's no surprise to see him make the move similar to uh, Junior Quaterna and um, uh, Phoenix Patterson I think they made the same move as well so it's no huge surprise that Ronan has has followed suit so um, obviously a massive massive blow to the league and to Waterford survival bid so we'll see if they can if they can maybe bring in another striker to replace him uh, it remains to be seen I, I wouldn't imagine Waterford are finished with their business just yet well guys, there you have it. Um, the kind of latest roundup of transfers from the Premier Division in the League of Ireland. Uh, let me know what rumours you've heard down in the comments below and let me know if you're happy with your team's business so far, what else needs to be done um, and how you're feeling ahead of the 2022 campaign. Really, really excited for it to kick off now. Not a million miles away, not too far out. Um, and if you have any video suggestions that you want to see in the coming weeks leading up to the league kicking off, make sure to drop them down in the comments below and be happy to oblige as I said earlier the video so uh, yeah I, I want to try and get at least two videos a week leading into the season and um, probably do a little um preview for each uh, team individually obviously want to wait for a few more transfers to go through there's plenty more to happen so um yeah we'll see we'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks but yeah gonna ha- try to get the content out as much as possible i hope you enjoyed the video guys if you did make sure there's two like the video as i said down below uh, 50 likes would be greatly greatly appreciated and if you can subscribe that would be absolutely fantastic hope you're keeping well guys and take it easy Oh, 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 oh,